Hey there guys, welcome to the video. My name is Pushpinder Gill and in this video we're going to be talking about the applications of integration or antiderivative, the applications of antiderivatives. So today in this video specifically we're going to be talking about a special application which is the applications on kinematics. So you must have studied kinematics in your physics subject wherein you would have understood that uh, that if you have the velocity and the time graph, so let's say this is the velocity and this is the time. So let's suppose this is your velocity and time curve. The gradient of that curve, the gradient of that curve will actually be equal to your dv over dt, that is dv over dt, which is nothing but the change in velocity over change in time, which is acceleration. That's fine. But how does integration help you? Now, if you find the area under the curve, the area under the curve will actually give you the displacement, the displacement that you have traveled. Let's say, for example, you know, let's say we take a very simple curve. This is velocity and this is time and this is the curve. And I want to find out, if I find out the area under this curve here, Right. If I find out the area under this curve over here, now as you can see, what we'll be doing is the area will actually be equal to velocity into time, which is actually going to be the displacement or the distance traveled, isn't it? So that is actually going to be displacement or the distance traveled. For example, this is this is the velocity versus time graph, right? So if you find out the area here, so this would be the time and this would be the velocity. That means the distance would be equal to velocity into time. And this would be the area traveled. So that means the area under velocity and time graph, right, will actually give you the distance or the displacement traveled. Now another thing is that uh, you already know that acceleration is equal to velocity over time, which means velocity is equal to acceleration times time. Again, if I say you have a graph of acceleration and time, the area under the graph will actually give you the velocity. Right? So area under the acceleration and time graph will actually represent velocity. Fine. So suppose you're understanding this point over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you uh, in, in a formal way. So let's suppose if you have this as your velocity and this is your time graph and you have let's say this as your curve and you want to find out the area you want to find out the distance or displacement traveled from t1 till t2 so let's suppose you want to find out this distance travel so the area under t1 and t2 under the graph will represent the distance or the displacement so let's say this is point a so that means the displacement would actually be equal to the area under the graph from t1 all the way till t2 and that would be v dot dt because that will be the area under this graph and the distance traveled which would be equal to so the distance displacement here what is happening is he's actually going in some other direction and after point a he is going in the going back towards the same direction so from at t1 he started like this and at point a he went back and did like this so the di displacement was just this much which is why we calculate displacement this way but the distance will be different right in distance he'll be going from t1 till a so he'll be going but going from t1 till a and then you will add the distance from a till t2 right okay? so suppose you're understanding this point this is how you calculate the distance displacement and this is how you calculate the distance i hope you understand the difference between displacement and distance let's suppose this is point a and this is point b and this is point c you go from here till here you go from here till here and then you come back here the displacement is the shortest possible distance between your starting point and your end point which is just a b but the distance on the other hand is the total distance traveled which is a b plus b c plus b c because he traveled a b he traveled b c and he came back b c so this would be the distance traveled and some of the distances some of the distances would be cancelled out in displacement which is fine no problem there and in distance we have to account for each possible distance so suppose you're getting this point over here uh, moving forward with a question here so the question says that we have a velocity graph and we want to find out the displacement over the first 3 pi by 4 seconds 
so what you have to do is you have to find the you have to find the disp you know you have to find the displacement from t equal to 0 all the way to t equal to 3 pi by 4 so it will be t equal to 0 and t equal to 3 pi by 4 and that would simply be v dot dt which would be equal to 0 to 3 pi by 4 of uh, 1 minus sine 2 sine 2 t dot dt which is going to be equal to so if I just kind of integrate that so this is 0 this is 3 pi by 4 what's the integration of 1 integration of 1 is t and what's the integration of uh, so you have negative 2 the integration of 2t is actually going to be equal to 1 by 2 and the integration of uh, cos sine 2t is actually going to be equal to negative cos 2t fine so that means if I just calculate that that's going to be 0 to 3 pi by 4 and uh, this is going to be t plus cos 2t so which is going to be so the 0 is going to be just 0 and uh, if I just calculate the value of 0 so it's going to be 0 oh, sorry it's going to be cos 3 pi by 4 plus cos of 2 into 3 pi by 4 which is 3 pi by 2 fine and uh, minus of 0 plus cos of 0 so this is so cos cos of uh, 3 pi by 2 is actually going to be equal to 0 so that means it's just going to be 3 pi by 4 uh, minus 1 which is going to be equal to 3 pi minus 4 over 4 fine so this would be the displacement these this many meters would be the displacement of the of the body from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 3 pi by 4 given this velocity curve so suppose you're understanding this point over here so let's say i want to find out the distance if i want to find out the distance all the way from 0 till 3 pi by 4 then things are going to be a little tricky how now what we have to do over here is we have to find out how the curve when does the curve when is the curve negative and when is the curve positive so what we have to find out we have to find out the x intercept so either you can use your calculator to do that or simply what we need to do is we need to find the x intercept that is the point when the curve cuts the x axis so what will be the x intercept x intercept would be when this value is equal to 0 so that means 1 minus 2 sine 2t is equal to 0 which means 2 sine 2t is equal to 1 that means sine 2t is equal to half now when is when is sine half sine is something which is half so 2t can be equal to pi by 6 right or it can be pi by 6 plus pi so as you know already one thing from the trigonometry videos that sine of pi minus x is actually equal to sine x right so this is something that we can use and remember we have to remain till 0 till 3 pi by 4 right so we have to remain till 0 till 3 pi by 4 so that means sine of pi by 6 is going to be equal to sine of pi minus pi by 6 which is actually equal to 5 pi by 6 so 2t can be equal to pi by 6 also it can be equal to 5 pi by 6 also and if i try to find any other value that will go out of bounds right because if I try to do sine of pi minus x or if I try to do sine of 2 pi plus 2 pi minus x, right? Because, uh, you know, the sine function goes, comes back to the same point after 2 pi, right? So that's 2 pi. And same thing over here is that sine of pi minus x is equal to So it will go, it will go out of bounds. So that means I have only these two values where uh, the I'm going to have my x intercept and even if I draw the curve so even if I draw the curve so the sine function is going to go like this and pi by 6 and then pi pi by 6 right so you know it's a different sine function so it doesn't necessarily start from 0 so that means what do I have to do now is I have to integrate differently how so from 0 till again since 2t is equal to this that means t is equal to pi by 12 or 5 pi by 12 because 2t is this, that means t is this or t is this. So I have to go from 0 till pi by 12. That would be into 1 minus 2 sine uh, 2t dot dt. Take the positive only. And then I have to add it till 
5 pi by 12, sorry, pi by 12, all the way till 5 pi by 12. That would be again v dot dt. And then I have to add it with, so this is 5 pi by 12, 5 pi by 12, all the way till 3 pi by 4. Fine. So that will again be v dot dt. So if I, even if I say, let's suppose it's between 0 and 3 pi by 4, even if I show you this in terms of degrees, as you know, pi is nothing but 180 degrees and this goes at 4 times 4 uh, and 2 and 5. So going to be 145, so this is going to be 135 degrees. So I have to, had to find it between 0 to 135 degrees. And pi by 12, which is 180 divided by 12, was equal to, uh, so if I just find 180 divided by 12, so that is just going to be equal to 15. So pi by 12 was just 15 degrees, right? And then I had 5 pi by 12, which is actually equal to 60 degrees. And the next sine function is 135 degrees. So I found the integral from 0 to 15. Then I found the integral from 15 till 60. Then I found the integral from 60 till 135. Because as the function goes, uh, my function was, this, this is let's say 0, right? So my function was positive here. Then it became negative. Then it became again positive. So this, these are the three different points of which I found the integral. Fine. So suppose you're getting what I'm trying to say here, guys. Uh, now what I have to do is I just have to simplify and find out these values here. So the first value that I have to find out is, uh, first of all, the integral is something that we have already found out. The integral is nothing but t plus cos 2t. So integral is nothing but t plus cos 2t. So first we'll find for the range of 0 till pi by 12. So if I find from 0 till pi by 12, first I'll actually put uh, first is that actually I'll actually put uh, pi by 12 so it's going to be pi by 12 plus cos of 2 into pi by 12 which is pi by 6 minus 0 minus cos of 0 because you know I'm just substituting t as equal to 0 here right and the next thing is going to be from pi by 12 all the way till 5 pi by 12 right so that is going to be equal to first of all I'll actually choose 5 pi by 12 plus cos of uh, pi by 12 into 5, sorry, 2 into 5 by 12, which is going to be 5 pi by 6, minus, again, I'll actually put 5, 12 pi by 12 here, pi by 12 into minus of cos of uh, pi by 12, that's going to be pi by 6. Then I'm going to find from 5 pi by 12 all the way to 3 pi by 4, so which is going to be equal to, first I'll take this value, which is actually going to be equal to um, 3 pi by 4, plus cos 3 pi by 2, fine, and then it's going to be negative of this whole value, which is nothing but this, which is minus 5 by 12, minus cos 5 pi by 6. So suppose you're getting this point over here, guys, what I'm doing now, you can just use your calculator now, and even if you don't want to use your calculator, uh, it's fine, no problem at all, right? So what you have to do is now you just have to find the positives and add all these three terms, right? So this is what you're supposed to do. I'm not going to get into too much detail, but yeah, I'll just tell you the answer. The answer to this question is going to be equal to 2.73, right? So you can just calculate this and this is the answer that you're going to get. Anyhow, but I hope, suppose you understood what I'm trying to say, the difference between finding the distance and finding out the displacement, right? So thank you very much for watching this video, guys. Uh, just to summarize what I did, just a summary of what I did. The summary was that if we have a velocity and the time graph, the integral from A, a till B of V dot dt will actually give you the displacement. And which let's suppose if that graph goes under somewhere like this and you have A is here, then you will find separately for this and separately for this to actually calculate the distance, right? So this is what you will do. So that will actually give you the distance. And another thing that I said was that if you have the acceleration and the time graph, the area under the curve, the area under the curve from A to B of acceleration dot dt will actually give you the velocity. So this was about uh, this uh, application of uh, integrals in, in kinematics, guys. So thank you very much for watching this video. We'll be rolling out more videos on the same topic. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to explore our website, like us, uh, give us a valuable like on our Facebook page, and also give us a valuable feedback on this email address. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next